Guys, welcome to the Elk Shape YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to talk about where to shoot an elk. And we got a nice 3D target to kind of go over. I'm gonna bring one of my homeboys, Joel Turner, one of arguably the best archery coaches in my opinion. Uh, and I think he is one of the best elk callers in the world. And uh, he's competed, he's, he makes awesome vocalizations, including Hopefully you guys can hear that bugle. So we're going to bring Joel in and him and I are going to discuss where to shoot an elk on this really windy Pacific Northwest day. Come along with us. All right, Joel Turner. Yeah. World champion elk caller, extraordinaire, <laughs> great archery coach, uh, shot IQ. Yeah. Let's talk about where to shoot a bull, specifically uh, as it pertains to archery. Okay. So when you're looking at vitals on these elk, right? I mean, you've got an eight ring, which is supposedly the lung area that comes all the way back to here. That's way too far back as far as the anatomy of an elk goes. So we've taken numerous bulls we've done necropsies on elk where we're not just gutting them and boning them out and getting them out of the woods i've been there with a vet elks laying on the ground we've basically taken the top half of the elk off with the guts inside so we get to see exactly how everything lays in there right so you've got this eight ring on this on this elk right which is supposedly representative of the lungs so on this this is your top line and up in here is what is commonly referred to as no man's land, right? There, but when you, when you really take an elk apart and you talk to the doctors, the vets that deal with, with large ungulates like this, there is no plural space here. People think it's just, it goes through, there's an air gap between the lungs and the spine, it just goes through and you know it doesn't do anything, right? You get a blood trail for like 300 yards. But if you notice that blood trail, when you hit bulls up here, if you get high up, you're not in the spine, but you're not, you are in the lungs, but you're not low enough in the lungs to actually collapse them. So you are hitting lungs, that's why you get that lung blood for about 300 yards, but then it just peters out and that bull is off to chasing cows in the next hour, right? Uh, but we sit there for days on end trying to, trying to find these elk. They're not dead. They have been hitting the lungs, but it's not low enough in the lung to actually collapse it. So you'd have to be almost down in here to get low enough to actually collapse the lung. Right. So high lung shots are very deadly. They don't go very far with it. Uh, it seems to collapse the lung very quickly as long as you're low enough in it. Now the 10 ring is right here on this elk and the 11 ring being right here. So, and you can see that it comes straight up the leg. Well, you've got that big shoulder blade that's up in here in this hump, and it comes down at an angle right up in here, right? So this is your shoulder blade, and then that connects to the humerus bone, which comes down to this knuckle right here. So it creates somewhat of a triangle that, you know, anywhere in that triangle, it's just meat. So you're gonna have a good, if you get good penetration there, which you should, it's just meat. You're going through ribs, that's all good stuff. On elk, you wanna maybe, like with deer, I shoot deer straight up the leg, right? But in elk, you're getting too close to the, to the shoulder blade, the why risk it? the humerus. Yeah, why, why, why risk, risk it? it, right? So with elk, I go to the crease and even behind the crease up to about two inches behind the crease. Certainly. I don't like to go too much farther behind that because then we start into diaphragm and guts and all that stuff. So these lungs do protrude about six inches behind the crease, but that's about it. So Yeah, I think it's something that people don't realize is the lungs are really just balloons. Right. And they expand mm -hmm. and they contract just like ours do. Right. And so you can't time a shot based on expansion and their breath and their breathing rates are a lot higher than ours, especially right. rutting bulls. Sure. Uh, I just don't like risking anywhere close to the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, and when people say they hit the shoulder, do they mean they hit the shoulder blade or do they actually hit the shoulder? I've shot through shoulders mm -hmm. with full metal jackets, super heavy arrows, mm -hmm. fixed broadheads. 
but they were close shots. Mm -hmm. Had I been 40 yards, 50 yards, I don't think we would have had the same results, but I've right. seen that at right. further distances. Mm -hmm. And then the, the scap. So I feel like there's a lot of risk when you're tied into the base of that triangle. Right, right. So the scapula, most modern setups with not with the fixed blade broadheads are gonna go through with normal kinetic energy is gonna go through uh, the scapula. But then you get toward the bottom of the scapula down in here, that's what most people are hitting, right? They're hitting where the scapula gets narrow yep. and it gets thick and it's got that humerus knuckle in it that protrudes down to here. So it's right in here, right? So, I mean, your 11 ring's right here and that humerus <laughs> is in here. So unless you're shooting fairly high energy stuff, that humerus could stop it. But up here in the scapula portion, but you don't want to hit them up here anyways mm -mm. because you're not really dealing with vitals. You're going over the top of the lungs for, for the most part, so... Okay, uh, let's discuss when you do nick the liver, mm -hmm. and let's even discuss that god awful brisket shot where you're like, oh, that's got to be a good shot, and they may even act sick, right. but they're not going to die. Right. So the the vitals actually start about five inches from the bottom. It's way higher. It's it's above this this dark line that you see on these bulls. It comes up the contour, and then it actually, I mean, those lungs and heart they sit. They sit right up in here, that heart does, and it doesn't drop really low, and it really sits at an angle. Like the point of the heart actually comes down in here. So the point's down in here, but just the point. The rest of it comes up very quickly. So you wanna get at least six inches, at least six inches up, and that's just the very bottom of the barrel, right? Uh, if you do brisket shoot a bull, they have massive blood loss right off the bat. They get dizzy very quickly, right? And what they will do, what you'll see a bull do with a brisket hit, they'll take a few steps and they get dizzy. And what they'll do is they'll pin their shoulder blades in. You'll see their legs will be 100%. slightly, right? They'll be slightly out and they'll pin their shoulder blades in and they'll just stand there. And you're thinking, oh man, I just smoked him right in the heart. But then they'll keep standing and keep standing and keep standing. And then eventually they're going to walk off. Yep. So you need to get another arrow in that critter if you want if you want to harvest it because it's not going to die from that. It's just a cut, right? Yeah. But it, because it's so low in the body, that's why it's going to bleed so much. A lot of blood vessels down there at the bottom of the brisket. So uh, liver hits. Liver hits take a while, right? So uh, I've shot bulls in liver that were still alive two and a half hours later. Certainly. So... Usually, probably laying down somewhere yeah, yeah. yeah so usually a great blood trail they will also because they have massive internal blood loss they're gonna they'll stand there they won't go a long ways they'll stand their ground they're usually within 100 yards of where you shot them from so it's time to get quiet time to get patient it's time to wait all day i i give them six hours on a liver hit all day long so Let's talk about once we've missed the diet. Like if you pierce the diaphragm, guys, like you might be in business. You you might not. I would say more likely not. But the diaphragm, you punch a hole through it. This animal's going to be. It's not a good thing for the animal's well-being. But we all know about back here, mm -hmm. and how that's the sound. I can't even. I almost want to throw up right. just thinking of yeah. the sound when you go through hollow yeah. guts. Yeah, right. It's not good. What's the protocol for these guys watching from your experience on hitting the guts? So gut hits, I back out for an entire 24 hour period. Um, and you know, it's, it, if you're worried about heat and meat loss and such, that animal is going to take a while to expire, like a while, if at all. We've hit, we've hit bulls in the guts before that we've chased for four days and they're chasing cows and they're fine. You can see the wound in them, uh, especially with a lot of today's broadheads that are two blade mm -hmm. and very small cutting diameter. They're what I consider a high penetration, low damage head. They do all kinds of good stuff when you get them in the lungs, but when you hit them in the guts, I mean, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to be a lethal hit. And we've gone days and days and days with these bulls and just, they're fine. They seem fine. I mean, it, if they were going to be septic, they would be dead. In, in, Definitely, in and they would not be so, chasing cows. They I mean, would these be. These things, their ability to heal is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've it's really I've pulled I've pulled backstrap out of elk and been like, "What's this?" Mm -hmm. Only to find a chunk of arrow and broadhead lodged in. They're tough. 
So Bodhi shot this arrow quartered away. It was a 20 yard shot. And, you know, of course, when you shoot quartered away, you're always shooting for that far side leg because that gets you through the center of the chest. So what, I, what we had him do is we had him shoot an arrow and you'll see that his height is just about halfway up, right? So we're in the center of that big lung mass. It's going through, it's exactly angled to the far, the, actually the front of the far shoulder, which gets us dead center through everything. The height of this right here would be the height of the aorta, right? That big valve that comes out of the top of the heart and this bull is going very short distances. So a lot of times when you're calling these bulls in, they're going to come in the front. We'll talk about this later, but they're going to come in the front. They're going to whirl. You give them the yo. When they stop, they stopped at this angle. They stopped quartered away. So you got to remember, shoot for that far side leg and halfway up the body. You're going to go through. This is going to catch the back of the close lung and the center and probably the top of the heart on the way going through. So this bull's not gonna go very far, should have a really good blood trail on it. Cool, so just remember folks, you're looking at this red six inch or eight inch sphere that's in the middle of this chest cavity. How you get your arrow in there, right? You have to remember all the obstacles you've got in the front, you've got obstacles coming in from, you know, if you're going frontal on it, uh, quartered away, you're always trying to look at that in a 3D format. So make sure that you're practicing your stop sounds and your shooting and shoot well.